Okay, so I apologise for the disruption to the uh, previous video. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing how to solve quartic equations. Okay, right, so I was just changing that x there to a y. Okay, so here's the great idea. What we have done is we've rearranged our quartic equation here into this form here, where we've got y squared plus k squared is equal to 2k minus p times y squared minus qy plus k squared minus i. R, okay, where we haven't selected k yet, that's just any complex number. This this is true for any complex number. You can rewrite it like this for any complex number k you like. Okay, what we're now saying is what if we could pick k really cleverly such that this quadratic on this side was a perfect square. Okay, because if we could do that, what we would then get is that y squared plus k is equal to plus or minus alpha y plus beta. Okay, and you then end up with two quadratic equations to solve. The first would be y squared plus k is equal to alpha y plus beta, and the second would be y squared plus k is equal to negative alpha y negative beta. Okay, um, so uh, you could then solve those two quadratic equations, each for two solutions, and then you'd end up with the four solutions to your original quartic equation. So this is a brilliant, brilliant strategy. Okay, the question is, can it be done? Okay, well, if it can be done, then what are alpha and beta? What are they going to have to be? Well, let's just expand out what alpha y plus beta squared is going to give us. It's going to give us the alpha squared y squared. Okay, then we'll get the plus 2 alpha beta y, and then we'll get the plus beta squared. Okay, so that means that alpha squared is going to have to equal the 2k minus p. So that means that alpha is going to have to equal the square root of 2k minus p. Okay, either of those square roots, it doesn't really matter. It can be um, whichever one you want. Let's say it's the principal square root, okay, of 2k minus p. Okay, uh, then what we will get is that 2 alpha times beta is going to have to equal negative q. Now, we now know what alpha has to equal to, uh, so then we can work out what beta has to be equal to. So, 2 alpha times beta is going to be equal to negative q. Substitute in alpha there, and we'll get 2 times the square root of 2k minus p times beta is equal to negative q. So that will then tell us that beta is equal to negative q over 2 times the square root of 2k minus p in the denominator here. Okay. Right, so there's our solution now for beta and alpha. What we now need to make sure is that beta squared is equal to this, and that's not assured at all. This is where we're going to get our condition on k. This is where we're going to get our restriction for which k values will actually make this work at all. Okay, so we now need k squared minus r to equal this square, basically. Now, if we square that, what we'll get is not the negative anymore. We'll get q squared over 4 times 2k minus p, there. Okay, so there is now the restriction that has to hold true in order uh, for this to work at all. Okay, so we need k to obey this equation here. Now, let's just multiply this 2k minus p up here. So we'll get k squared minus r times 2k minus p needs to equal q squared over 4. Okay, expanding this out, we'll now get 2k cubed from this term here. We'll then get minus pk squared from this portion here. We'll then get minus 2rk, and then we'll get plus rp is equal to q squared over 4. So basically, this is where I said we would reduce the problem down to finding the solution for a cubic equation. Here we have a cubic equation to solve, okay? Uh, but we know that cubic equations can be solved using Cardano's formula. If you don't know Cardano's formula, that I have a video on it in my playlist on classical algebra, okay? So, cubic equations can be solved. This cubic equation can be solved. You can find the solutions to this cubic equation, okay? Now, of course, there'll be potentially three separate solutions to this cubic equation. We don't care about that. We just need one.
We only need 1k to make this work for our plan to work. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the fact that you might end up with multiple k values. You just need 1. Okay, the k values are just part of your plan. They're not the overall uh, end of the plan. They're a means to an end, not a actual end in themselves. So you don't care about the fact that there might be loads of k values. You just need 1. Okay, right. If you can then solve that equation and find a value of k, then that means that our equation here can now be reduced down to this form, y squared plus k squared is equal to the square root of 2k minus p times y, okay, and then minus q over 2 times the square root of 2k minus p, like so and all of that squared. So we can rewrite our equation like so. If we have picked k to be this very clever value such that this condition here holds true, basically, then it is true to write that. Okay, and we can rewrite our equation in that form. Okay, then, finally, what we can just do is square root both sides. Okay, so what that will then tell us is that y squared plus k is either equal to the positive square root, which is equal to the square root of 2k minus p times y uh, minus uh, q over 2 times the square root of 2k minus p. So that's one solution, okay? Uh, or the other alternative is that it's the negative of that. y squared plus k is equal to negative um, the square root of 2k minus p times y plus q over 2, the square root of 2k minus p. Okay, and remember all of these are just constants. We've got k, we've got p and q from the original problem. Okay, r has vanished because remember all the information in r has gone into k. Okay, r was in that condition, that cubic equation that we had to solve for k. So there's loads of information from r gone into finding the k value. Okay, and here we now just have two quadratic equations. Okay, each of those quadratic equations will have two solutions. That overall gives us four solutions. Okay, those four solutions are then the solutions to our uh, quartic equation here. And from the solutions to that quartic equation, we can get the solutions uh, to our general quartic equation. Okay, so that's an outline of how to uh, solve quartic equations.